Okay, so now let's 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 take a step back and talk about the Bobby Taylor Company, right? How did the Bobby Taylor Company start? Started in 2007 mm -hmm. in my living room oh, wow. in Canada okay. with the little baby oh. who's a grown man now. Uh -huh. um, I've always been into PR somehow because my mother was into PR mm -hmm. and is still into PR. I was kind of born into that. I mean, I keep telling people all the time, I grew up around everybody from Super Eagles to Power Uti to Charlie Boy and all of that because yeah. my mom was very much into um, PR. She, she was um, head of marketing for Nigeria Airways okay. um, and was also involved in other things such as, you know, the... What was that soccer tournament we had with Super Eagles? USA 94, okay, yeah, yeah. all of that uh -huh, stuff. And yeah. Nigeria Airways was the official carrier. Yeah. So she had the whole PR thing going on. Okay. Um, I have done commercials, mm -hmm. um, Nigeria Airways commercials. Um, me and a bunch of my, my classmates sang in the opening of uh, most beautiful girl in Nigeria in 1984. Wow. So I'm like, yeah, Ben Bruce came to our school and he uh -huh. picked the whole group of us oh and goodness. we did all that. So that was fun. Uh -huh. um, so I've always been into it. Mm -hmm. But then when I really decided to turn it into a business was in 2007. I was like, you know what? I need to start a firm. And my main thing was, what would this be called? What, okay. would, I, what would I call this business? Yeah. Now, I thought about the two most influential men in my life, which is two of my granddaddies. Mm -hmm. One of them, Robert Onyejekwe, and of course, Chief Eno George, Ta George Taylor. So I took Robert, Bobby, and I took from the George Taylor, Taylor, oh. and then I came up with Bobby Taylor. All right, okay. Yes. That's I wanted something masculine because mm -hmm. I was very into entertainment. And I had started working with the likes of LD and them then, and I felt that, you know, for Nigeria, I needed to, a very strong name, mm. a very masculine name so mm -hmm. that people would take me seriously. Okay. And that's how, you know, Bobby Taylor came about. All right. Yeah. Okay, good. So, I mean, you're in Canada and then you decide, obviously, because Canada is where, like, you went to school and whatnot. And then you decide you're moving back to Nigeria. Right. Right. So I went to school in Massachusetts, actually. Okay. I just moved to Canada and uh -huh. that's where I was living okay. with my family at the time. And... Um, I, I've told this story a million times, but I just think it's just so important when it comes to how I started BTC and why I'm here, is I heard about the Future Awards, okay. read about it online. Okay. I sent an email to the Future Awards and I said, listen, I'd like to provide the gift bags for um, the Future Awards. And in return, I just asked that you mention gift bags provided by Bobby Taylor. Okay. And so I got this fantastic bag. I had different brands donate into it. T.Y. Bello gave us CDs at the time. House of Tar gave us um, makeup brushes. Mm -hmm. um, Ekene Onu, the Mrs. Club, the, the chick literature gave us books personally autographed. I had all sorts of stuff. Mr. King, mm. different people in the bags. And then, of course, I threw my company profile in there. Oh, wow. Now, strategy is simple. You have 30 winners of the um, feature awards. And each of them, as they win, would hold. Right. The Bobby Taylor gift bag with my name written boldly on there. Lovely. And there's the cameras and all the press. Uh -huh. <laughs> right? Yeah. So next thing you know, there's pictures of DeBange, who was a winner then, holding uh -huh. the Bobby Taylor gift bag. All these fantastic people and well-deserved winners of mm -hmm. the Future Awards holding my gift bag. And people started to ask, who Who's is Bobby, Bobby Taylor? Taylor? Okay. And then it became almost time for me to move back home. Wow. Yeah. After the Future Awards, I think it was like a week later, um, we got the phone call from the band, and that's how we started working with the band at the time. My goodness. So it worked. And he's still a client of yours? Yes, he's still a client. Fabulous. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that happened, the Future Awards happened, and then you moved to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what, was, what, were, what were your expectations moving to Nigeria and then your actual arrival in the country? I'm not sure that I knew I was going to move. Mm -hmm. I just knew that I wanted to come down for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I got here, everything just seemed to work. Okay. Um, and then I decided I wasn't going back. Okay. Um, I'd gotten jobs like fell on Broadway, big jobs mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm sure other PR firms pitched for, but then yeah. I was successful and I got it. So 
I figured, you know what, this is where I really want to be. Because even when I was in Canada, people would call me like, ah, Bobby, your name came up yeah. at our meetings. Uh -huh. But then the one thing they keep saying is, you're not on ground. You're not on ground. Mm. Most of the people that were interested in my services were from Nigeria. They were not from Canada. Yeah. And so I wanted to be here. Okay. Um, when Debanj launched The Entertainer, um, flew us down um, to handle PR for that, mm -hmm. went well. It just, everything just seemed to make sense here okay. for me. Okay. And then I knew it was time to come back. Okay, all right. So you moved here, you're here. And then obviously, like you said, you came to visit. And then when you came to visit, you decided, okay, this is the best right. place for you. And you're going to stay. So then your journey starts, basically. Exactly. And then tell us about that journey as it starts. Ooh, hiring staff, having a place to work out of, looking for the right types of clients. Um, the whole PR thing wasn't what it is now. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Nobody really understood what, so what, what the hell what I was were, so doing. So what were those, like nobody's understanding what, what you're doing. So what kind of experiences did you have? People just not understanding why they needed PR. Uh -huh. People not understanding the value mm -hmm. that, you know, we brought to the table. Um, we had um, people just not get it. Just, okay, fine, you got us into seven newspapers, so I can do that now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and us having to really um, explain to people that, listen, it takes a lot of work to go sit down with an editor and explain to that editor why, one, you're not going to pay them, two, why they should believe in your client's brand, mm -hmm. getting them to believe in that enough to want to feature it or mm -hmm. write about it. Yeah. You know? Um, but I think we're, we're slowly almost there. Slowly okay. though, still. Okay. Slowly almost there? Slowly. You don't think, so even from then till now, no. you don't think people no. like 100% believe in the power of PR? No.